So here we will examine the different classifications of hormones. The two hormone types are the amino acid based hormones and the steroid hormones. The amino acid based hormones may be derivatives of amino acids, they may be small proteins that are called peptides, or they may be proteins themselves. The steroid hormones are lipid based because they are all derived from cholesterol. We will see that the two hormone types differ tremendously in how they are carried in the bloodstream and how they interact with the cells that they control. The amino acid hormones are water soluble, so they can be dissolved in the plasma of the bloodstream. The only exception to this is thyroid hormone, which is amino acid based, however it behaves more like a steroid hormone. Because the amino acid hormones are water soluble, this means that they cannot easily cross the plasma membrane of their target cells. So this means that they will typically bind to receptors on the outer surface of the plasma membrane. On the other hand, the steroid hormones are lipid soluble, so they can easily cross the plasma membranes of their target cells. However, this means that they are not soluble in the blood plasma and must be carried by special proteins within the blood. Because they have the ability to cross the plasma membrane, the receptors for steroid hormones are typically located on the inside of their target cells. So we saw that the amino acid based hormones do not have the ability to enter the target cell and therefore must bind to receptors on the surface of the plasma membrane. These plasma membrane receptors then create and trigger what are called second messenger systems inside the cell. So let's examine how these second messenger systems work. There are two examples of second messenger systems that we will see with the endocrine system. The cyclic AMP, also called the CAMP system, and the PIP2 calcium system. Both work very similar to one another, so we will examine their general characteristics here. So this is an example of the cyclic AMP system. So starting on the left of the diagram, we see that the hormone binds to its receptor on the plasma membrane. Notice that the receptor has a region that spans to the inside of the cell. Once the hormone binds, the receptor then activates a protein that is called a G protein. This G protein then goes on to activate an enzyme. For the CAMP second messenger system, this enzyme is called adenylate cyclase. The enzyme Adenylate cyclase then creates the second messenger called CAMP, and it is CAMP that activates other enzymes to trigger the response of that target cell. So one benefit of using second messenger systems is that the activated adenylate cyclase enzyme can create a large amount of CAMP inside of the cell, which acts as an amplifier of the original hormone signal. In order for signaling to slow down or stop, CAMP must be broken down by another enzyme that's called phosphodiesterase. So here's an example of a few important phosphodiesterase inhibitors. What these substances do is that they inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme and prolong CAMP signaling inside of the cell. We see that caffeine is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, which explains why it works as a stimulant in both our nervous system and our cardiovascular system. We also see that certain drugs that treat COPDs and psoriasis are phosphodiesterase inhibitors because they work to reduce inflammation. And we also see that certain drugs that affect heart failure because phosphodiesterase inhibitors tend to increase the heart's ability to contract. And we also see drugs that work on hypertension are also phosphodiesterase inhibitors because many phosphodiesterase inhibitors act as vasodilators in order to lower blood pressure. We also see that another drug called sildenafil, which is the active ingredient in Viagra, is a selective phosphodiesterase inhibitor that specifically targets the tissue of the corpus cavernosa, which is the erectile tissue of the penis, and it also acts as a vasodilator when promoting, uh, and it helps to promote blood flow into this erectile tissue. Another example of a second messenger system is the PIP2 calcium mechanism. It works very similar to the CAMP system, but with different enzymes and second messengers that are created. We see that in this system, a hormone binds to a receptor on the plasma membrane, just like with our cyclic AMP system, and this receptor then activates a G protein. And that G protein then goes on to activate an enzyme called PLC. The PLC enzyme then creates a second messenger called IP3, 
And we see that IP3 in this pathway causes an increase in the amount of calcium inside of the cell. So we see that the signal molecule in the upper left, which is the hormone, binds to its receptor. That receptor then activates a G protein. This G protein then activates the enzyme PLC, which creates the second messenger called IP3. IP3 then stimulates the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum inside the cell. And we see that it's calcium that triggers a response from the target cell. So next we're going to examine how steroid hormones work. So since the steroid hormones have the ability to cross the plasma membrane, these hormones do not have to use the second messenger systems. So instead they will change the behavior of the target cell using a mechanism called direct gene activation. What happens after the hormone crosses the plasma membrane is that it binds to its receptor in the cytoplasm of the cell. The hormone and its receptor will then enter the nucleus of the cell and bind to a gene on the DNA of that cell. A gene is a region of DNA that directs the cell to make a specific protein or a specific enzyme. We also see that DNA does not have the ability to leave the nucleus of the cell. So a template of DNA called mRNA is made, and the mRNA has the ability to exit the nucleus and interact with the ribosomes of the cell. And it's those ribosomes that are going to make the specific protein or the specific enzyme that that gene is coded for and will therefore change the behavior of the cell by changing which genes have been activated. So we have seen that these cells must have receptors for a particular hormone if they are going to be influenced by that hormone. This is true for both the amino acid-based hormones and the steroid-based hormones. We see that upregulation is the formation of more hormone receptors by the target cell in response to low levels of hormone in the bloodstream. This helps make sure that the target cell will respond to small quantities of hormone in the bloodstream, as more receptors are going to have a better chance of catching a hormone that's traveling in the bloodstream. And I often use the analogy of fishing for this one. So imagine that the receptors are the baited hooks right, on your fishing lines. The more baited hooks that you have in the water, the better chance you have of catching something. On the other hand, downregulation is the formation of fewer receptors in response to high levels of hormones circulating in the bloodstream. This helps to desensitize the target cell when hormone levels are high so that the cell does not over-respond when hormone levels are extremely elevated. So in summary, we've seen that some important differences between the steroid-based hormones and the amino acid-based hormones. In this table, the steroid hormones are in the middle and the amino acid-based hormones are on the right. The major sources of the steroid hormones are the adrenal glands, the gonads, and the thyroid. The amino acid-based hormones are secreted from every other endocrine gland that we're going to examine in this module. So as the steroid hormones cannot be easily dissolved in the bloodstream, they must be carried by plasma proteins, whereas amino acid-based hormones can be dissolved in the blood plasma itself. The location of receptors for the steroid-based hormones is inside of the cell, because we saw that these hormones can easily cross the plasma membrane, while the amino acid-based hormones have receptor that are, receptors that are located on the surface of the cell, because the amino acid-based hormones had a much more difficult time getting into their target cell. The mechanism by which the steroid hormones act at the target cell is direct gene activation, where the amino acid-based hormones use second messenger systems like CAMP or PIP2 calcium.